everyone, uh, welcome to Star OMOP Tutorials. My name is Priya Desai and I'm the Research and Development Manager for Biomedical Informatics um, here at Research IT at Stanford Medicine. This is part one of tutorial two. Um, a quick recap, uh, Tools for Healthcare Data Science um, is a series of four tutorials of increasing complexity designed to provide an introduction to modern data science tools and resources for analyzing the clinical data available to Stanford researchers. Um, the focus of these tutorials is to familiarize the researchers with um, the underlying data, tools, and resources uh, available at Stanford, but particularly in the data and computing environment available at Stanford. Please see part two of tutorial one uh, for the prerequisites to take these courses. Um, the main goal for tutorial two um, is um, actually is, is that by the end of this tutorial, you should have experience querying a subset of the data in uh, the Stanford Research Repository or STAR. Um, this subset, which we will refer to as the STAR OMOP DID Lite, uh, contains the STAR EHR data in the Odyssey Common uh, Data Model OMOP CDM 5.3.1. This data set is de-identified and classified as a moderate risk data set, and therefore it can be accessed via Jupyter Notebooks um, from your local laptop. Uh, by the end of this session, you will be able to describe the primary tenets of the OMOP uh, common data model. You will also be able to uh, apply your understanding of the CDM and perform basic SQL queries to retrieve data from the OMOP CDM in BigQuery. Uh, please note that for this part of the tutorial, um, a large part of it has been based on the OMOP CDM and Standardized Vocabularies Workshop offered, at, uh, offered by the Odyssey um, Consortium at their annual symposiums in 2017 and 2018. And we've taken a lot of that material and further extended it uh, for use um, by Research IT. Um, so a um, quick overview of the agenda for this tutorial. Um, we'll go over the uh, STAR data repository, introduce you to you know, the, big, the big picture vision that we have, um, where STAR OMOP DID Lite dataset fits in. Um, we'll go over the, the data risk requirements um, for Stanford, uh, and then we'll do a deep dive um, into the OMOP CDM version 5.3, um, but we'll do this using the STAR OMOP DID Lite 1% data. So we'll actually be using the Stanford data um, uh, to do this deep dive. Um, you know, this deep dive will consist of, you know, a review of the conceptual view of the OMOP CDM tables, the standardized vocabulary. This um, tutorial, I think I mentioned before also, is, is um, heavily focused on actually the vocabulary, um, which includes, you know, how do you do the mapping? Um, what is Athena? And how, you know, give you guys a lot of hands-on um, experience with actually doing these mappings um, and going from one vocabulary, maybe ICD-9, ICD-10, to the, stand, to the standard vocabularies, which is the OMOP vocabularies. Uh, we'll also talk about how, um, you know, the ontology structure is um, set up in OMOP. Uh, we'll explore the relationships, disease hierarchies, drugs, um, and in th the end, we'll actually do a bunch of hands-on exercises using the STAR OMOP DID Lite data, 1% data, um, do like, you know, queries the kind of queries that you would do as a researcher, um, like, you know, from the OMOP data, can you obtain the average length of stay of a patient? Um, can you find all the procedures and diagnosis codes associated with the visit? Um, and so on. Uh, okay, so what are we building and, and why? Um, we wanted to give you a, a 10,000 foot view of this long-term vision so you can better understand where and how STAR OMOP fits in. So um, STAR stands for Stanford Research Data Repository and it's got an ambitious vision. Um, our goal is to create a single integrated data lake containing the clinical data of, containing clinical data of different modalities. Um, you know, so all the clinical data 
that is being generated at the hospitals um, bring them all together in one common place. Uh, currently, a lot of this data exists in silos and our goal is to really break down these silos and aggregate this data for research. That is the vision for STAR. Um, to bring this clinical data from its raw state to, its an, to an analysis ready state and eventually make this data self-service. So STAR right now is, is really growing to support um, AI use cases and bringing in more and more hospital um, data sources. So right now it has both structured and unstructured raw and analysis ready uh, data. Um, some of the main data sources, the ones that we're gonna talk about in this tutorial is actually the EPIC Clarity data from the two hospitals and the Healthcare Alliance clinics, which, um, which are included as part of the LPCH and SHC data. Um, this, this EHR data is what is currently being um, converted into OMOP and will be the primary focus of these tutorials. Other applications that are in the process of being integrated into STAR is the radiology imaging, the PACS radiology data, bedside monitoring data, uh, genomics, digital pathology data, and so on. Um, as we were building out the STAR data repository, we wanted to make sure that we adhere to um, what are called the FAIR principles for, data sci for scientific data management. Um, the FAIR data principles are essentially a set of guiding principles um, in order to make data findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Um, so these principles basically just define characteristics that contemporary data sources and tools uh, vocabularies and infrastructure should exhibit uh, to assist discovery and reuse by third parties. Uh, what that really me means is that we need to just make sure that the data provenance is well understood and documented, the data is uniquely identifiable, uh, metadata is indexed um, in a searchable resource, and access is available using uh, standard communications protocols. So with all that in mind, we decided to go with um, the, the Odyssey OMOP common data model. So Odyssey stands for Observational Health Data Sciences and Informatics. OMOP stands for Observational Medical Outcomes Partnership. And um, CDM, of course, is, is common data model. And so we've decided to go with the OMOP common data model wherever possible. The version we have mapped the Stanford EHR data to is uh, OMOP CDM version 5.3.1. For data modalities like radiology, waveform, etc., for which there is no OMOP representation or mapping as yet, uh, we are currently storing the metadata in the original format in BigQuery in a way that it's still linkable to the star OMOP EHR data. Um, I'm going to show you guys a diagrammatic view. I hope that helps. Um, so this is a diagrammatic view of what we are trying to do. Um, on the left, um, uh, on, the, on the left are basically all the various disparate data sources, um, clinical data sources that exist at the hospital. So step one, uh, we're trying to bring it all to a central location. Um, that central location is the Google Cloud Platform. That's our current location of choice. Um, these data types in green um, are the data modalities for which we which we are actively moving into uh, Google Cloud right now. They are the modalities for which we've already gotten the green light to go ahead and we're in the process of actively moving them uh, into the cloud. The data types in gray, uh, these are the ones we are in the process of getting access to. Um, the goal is that all of this data will be centrally located and the metadata will be stored in BigQuery and then this entire this data repository is is being called star so star is basically it's it's this you know huge data lake um, for the data types that can be mapped into OMOP so like the clarity LPCH clarity SHC that can be mapped into OMOP uh, there is also I think I didn't add to that um, yeah so the CGS data the genomics data the cancer data 
Um, there actually does exist OMAP mapping for these data types. Um, when we bring them in, we will actually be doing the mapping into, um, into OMAP for these data types. So the data types for which the OMAP mapping um, does exist, those data types will be mapped into the OMAP data format. Data types like uh, Power Path Pathology or the Philips Waveform or Pax Dicom, uh, for which the OMAP mapping does not exist as yet. Um, we will continue to store the metadata in BigQuery. The main, the big data files will be, um, so say the, the data in the binary format, the actual data will be stored in um, GCP buckets. Uh, the metadata will be stored in BigQuery and it will be linkable to the OMOP data sets. Um, De-identified OMOP data uh, is currently available uh, pre-IRB via Nero, and the goal is to provide de-identified clinical data, which is um, you know of these other data modalities that are not available in OMOP, to also be available de-identified um, to the researcher pre-IRB via Nero. So this is this is work in progress. This is already there. Um, quick recap of the naming conventions. So star OMOP, when we say star OMOP, it, it basically refers to the clarity data from the two hospitals in the Odyssey OMOP common data model. Star OMOP DID is the de-identified version of star OMOP. Uh, star OMOP DID light is the star OMOP DID without any of the clinical text or annotations. Star OMOP DID light 1% is 1% of the star OMOP DID light data. And the reason we're actually going to make 1% of the data available as well is just so that uh, we believe it, it's, it's a good way for users to, um, you know, play with, the, you know, to refine and to define and refine their queries. Um, is how I like to put it. So, you know, you can just play around with a much smaller data set uh, till you're sure this is, you know, this is the query you want to run before you run it on the entire data set. Because um, the way this model has been set up, when you run this query from Nero, um, the query costs are borne by the user. So we wanted to make sure that, you know, we you had a smaller data set, uh, you know, for which the query costs would be very trivial as you're actually building up your query. Star Stride. Um, many of you actually have probably used Stride uh, in the past and for so long. Star Stride is, is essentially the identified um, idiosyncratic data model from Clarity, um, which this data model was defined here at Stanford and it's very Stanford specific. So this data model continues to exist, but both Stride and um, OMOP are two um, data models that sit on top of the same raw data, which is the clarity data from the two hospitals. Um, Star Tahoe, some of you may have used it in the past. It's um, been um, deprecated now. Um, it's basically, it, it was Star Stride without any clinical text, but we're no longer supporting it. In the next tutorial, we'll actually go over the um, uh, Stanford privacy uh, requirements and the Stanford uh, data privacy definitions. Um, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.